You are lucky my husband is not here. He would shoot you. Now get out! Hello, Christopher. I'm giving you a choice. There's a phone upstairs with a number next to it. You call it. You stay on the phone for one minute. Then the money will be yours in the morning. She wants to talk to you. Where are you? You want vengeance. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we'll recap a 2020 American horror film named The Call. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see Chris who has recently joined the school. A girl Tanya meets him and sees that he is looking for the principal's office. She takes him there where the principal asks Tanya to go to her class. And here we learn that the principal has called him to talk about what happened at his old school. Chris says the past is past and requests him to keep it there. That night, we see him at a carnival with Tanya and his ex-boyfriend Zach and his brother Brett. Later, Brett says they should do a toast to Laura, and Chris asks who is she, to which they tell him she was Tanya's sister. One day Laura was at Edith Cranston's daycare center and then no one ever saw her again. Zach says they can't get Edith to confess, but they can make her suffer. On the way, they tell Chris that they are going to Cranston's to remind her what kind of monster she is. Brett says Edith is a witch and everyone knows it. Now upon reaching there, they break her house windows and throw a dead animal inside. But Chris doesn't do that, and while they were leaving, Edith blocks their way. She says she is not going to be run out of her own home because as much as they hate her, she hates them more. Tanya says they never going to stop, not until she leaves or dies, to which Edith says she is not afraid of her, but she should be very afraid of her. She asks her where did she get that necklace, to which Tanya says see her in hell, and Edith says yes she will. She then yells at them to get out, and they all leave from there. Later. We see Edith with her husband Edward. Edith is very sad and says she is trying to remember the adventures they had. The hopes, the dream, the children's. But it's all gone. And there is only darkness. Edward consoles her and tells her that his dream was to be with her forever. And he is, however, she leaves there. We then see her with a doll in her arms, and a photo of a girl on the table, after which she commits suicide by hanging herself. The next morning, Chris's mother notices he is lost and she asks him if is everything okay, and we see that he is scared seeing the news of Edith's death. After a few days, he goes to meet the group and they were worried because he was not coming to school. He tells them that they were at Cranston's the night she died, and what if they were the reason? Zack says they didn't do anything and asks him to keep his mouth shut, to which Chris says he is not afraid of him. Tanya asks them to relax and takes him aside, and says she is dead and they can't change that. We see that Tanya is getting close to Chris, and Zack is not quite happy about it, and Brett is worried about this. Later that night, we see Edward dialing a number and calling Chris. The group then reaches Cranston's house and Tanya asks him why they are here, but he asks them to follow him. He asks Chris that he must be new, and says it doesn't matter. He says he is sure they must be heartbroken, because whose house are they gonna terrorize now? Tanya asks him what does he want, to which he says if he got what he wanted, this meeting would be a whole lot less civil. Edith was different and more forgiving, so it seems like she surprised everyone when she included her in her will. Tanya says she doesn't want anything of hers, to which he asks not even $100,000. Hearing this, she asks him what's the catch. Edward tells them that Edith liked to play games, and asks them are any of them superstitious? Not afraid of ghosts or thing? To which they all say no. Edward then tells them that there is a phone upstairs in the study at the end of the hall. All four of them must go up there one at a time. There is a number next to the phone. They have to call it and stay on the phone for a minute and they get $100,000. Chris asks who are they calling? To which he says they are calling Edith. She had him bury a phone with her. They have to be on the phone for a minute. Then they have to exit out the back door. And the money will be theirs in the morning. Chris asks what if they hang up early? To which he says their money will be split between the people who stay on the call. Tanya says she doesn't want his money but Zack wants to play the game. Tanya says she is leaving, but Edward tells her that Edith's death was not an accident. She killed herself. Tanya says what does it have to do with them, to which he says she left a suicide note, 
and in that she made it very clear that their constant threats to her over the years were more than she could bear. He wants them to let him honor his wife's last wish by making a call. Otherwise, he will go to the police with the note. He then gives them time to discuss. And when he comes back, Tanya says they are going to do it. Edward says once one of them has completed the call, the Lyra clock upstairs will chime. Then the next person can take their turn. He tells Zach to go first. Brett will be second. Chris will follow Brett. And Tanya will make the final call. He then leaves their shutting the door. And Zach goes for his turn. He dials the number. And the phone rings at the cemetery at Edith's grave. She picks up the call and says she is so glad he called. She then asks him to look in the mirror. Zack sees Edith behind him in the mirror and gets terrified, and asks what is this? Edith tells him he is in her world now. He disconnects the call and leaves there, but we see him still sitting on the chair. He opens the door and sees childhood himself and Brett, who asks Brett to hide under the bed. His drunk dad then enters the room and beats him with his belt, but suddenly he disappears and Zack hears Brett's voice from outside. He goes following the voice and finds his toy in a corridor, and only then someone passes from behind him. He then hears a growl and his dad's ghost pushes him into a room, where the ghost tells him that he knows he cannot run from him, because he is always gonna find him. He then starts hitting him and says he is embarrassed to be his dad, but he is going to give him one last chance to hit him. Zack says he can't, and he just wants to go home, but his dad strangles him with his belt, and we see Edith disconnecting the call. Outside, Brett was waiting for his turn, when the clock chimes and the door opens, and he leaves saying if Zack can do it. So he can. He dials the number and says he is calling about his money. Edith says he called the right place, and he thinks that she is alive and this is all a joke. She asks him how is his daddy, and says she knew his dad was a horrible man. Brett asks her to shut up, but she says after his dad's wife died, he started hurting him in unimaginable ways. She then reminds him of his favorite nursery rhyme. Something very scary is underneath my bed. Could it be a monster underneath my bed? She says all he has to do is stay on the call and check to see if the monster is under the bed. She then also shows him the same vision in which he is hiding under the bed and his dad beating Zack. Suddenly they disappear from there. He comes out of under the bed. He then enters the carnival out of his room and gets terrified by a ride. He runs from there and finds the ghost of Zack and his father and after fleeing from there, he enters a room and sits on a bed, where his father's ghost tells him she wants him. He then sees a look behind Rin on the bed, and when he looks behind, a monster drags him under the bed. The clock chimes and the door opens again, but they say they didn't hear the back door open. Chris then goes for his turn, and dials the number. Edith asks him how he handles so many secrets and pain. She then shows him a vision in which he is with her girlfriend Sarah and we learn that she is pregnant with him. She says she wants to tell her mom and dad, but Chris asks her to wait till the semester is over. But she decides that she has to tell her parents, and then she leaves there. Later while going home, he finds Sarah's crashed car and her dead body inside. He then finds himself in the corridor, where he encounters Sarah's ghost, who starts moving toward him. Chris tries to flee but falls, but he manages to get up and run away. He then sees Sarah in normal form who asks him to come and hold her hand. He holds her hand and she says they don't have much time. Chris tells her he missed her so much, and she tells him the way he got in is the way he get out. She asks him to find the phone, and he sets out for it. He manages to find the phone, but only then Brett holds his hand and asks him what's happening. Chris tells him the phone is the only way to get out, but then Brett starts laughing maniacally. However, Chris manages to reach the phone and come out. The door then opens and Tanya enters for her turn, and when Chris reaches to stop her, he finds Edith playing piano there. But when he removes the cover, no one is there. He then notices Edith sitting on the chair, which haunts him and disappears. Here Tanya sees a video wherein Chris tells Edith that they bought the contract, her death, and everything. Edith says two down and one to go, and once he takes care of Tanya, the money will be his just like she promised. After this, when they are confronted, Tanya points a gun at him and says that she saw him and Edith on the TV and she knows what he is planning. He asks her to put the gun down and tries to explain that Edith is not alive. There is no game, the call is just a trap, and she tricked all of them. He also tells her that Brett and Zack are dead, then Edward walks in and says they all took the only thing that he cared about in this world. 
but they figured out a way to stay in touch. Only then does the phone ring, and he started talking to Edith and tells Tanya that she wants to talk to her. But Chris shoots him and they both flee to escape the house. But as Tanya enters the call room, the door shuts. Only then does the phone ring, and Tanya picks up the call. She then shows her a vision of Cranston's daycare, where we see Tanya's sister Laura. And because it is her birthday today, Edith gifts her a necklace. It is then revealed that Tanya actually killed her sister Laura because she was jealous of her as she was the favorite daughter of their dad. Tanya disconnects the call and tries to leave, but Edith stops her way. She says when she saw her wearing the necklace she gave to Laura, she knew she was dead, and she knew it was her. And when they told them she was missing and she was blamed, she died inside. The demon swirled around her and she joined them. Tanya begs her to leave her alone, but Edith says there is a special place in hell for her. She explains to her that hell is not all fire and brimstone like the Bible says. Instead, it is reliving one's worst nightmare for eternity. She then encounters Laura's ghost who asks her to play with her, and then she attacks her. Here the door opens and Chris enters the room and picks up the call. He asks her what does she want, and she says vengeance. He then encounters Sarah's ghost who asks him why he left her, and then he also gets trapped in Edith's world with all the other four. And the movie ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.